Today I'll show you how I made this Roman style concrete Mandalorian bust using both silicone and 3D printed molds. This is the way. That I made this thing. Is that, is that right? Is that the catchphrase? Hi, I'm fed. Ouch. Hi, I'm Fed. I'm learning to make stuff by pouring tons and tons of videos through my eye holes. Today's video is the perfect intersection of two of my interests. I'm a big Star Wars nerd and I love learning new skills. I've been watching a lot of silicone mold making videos and wanted to try it out. I've also watched all seasons of The Mandalorian and got the idea to combine those two things into one project. What project though? Well, Mando always looked Roman to me. He reminds me of a gladiator crossed with a Roman emperor. You see it, right? So I made up my mind to make a Roman style Mandalorian bust. Out of concrete though, because I don't have any marble lying around. There ended up being three parts of this project that I worked on simultaneously. The Mando bust, the pedestal that the bust sits on, and the concrete itself. Yeah, the concrete ended up being a whole thing. We're going to work backwards through the three parts. We'll start with the concrete and get that out of the way. Concrete is essentially a mixture of cement and aggregate. Cement is a gray powder that when mixed with water forms a kind of glue. An aggregate is a filler that adds strength and volume to the concrete mixture. Concrete comes in ready mixes where the cement and aggregate are in the same bag. But based on my YouTube research, I decided to go old school and mix my own concrete. It's more work, but gives you more control over the mix. So I bought a bag of Portland cement, the most common type of cement, and a bag of play sand to be my aggregate. Then I spent weeks, yeah, weeks, mixing different ratios of each ingredient until I figured out what looked and worked best for my molds. I got sand as my aggregate because even I knew that the chunkier the aggregate, the rougher the surface of the concrete and I wanted a very smooth surface. Well, here's the first pedestal I made. It looks pretty good. At first I thought it was great. I was just really excited about making something out of concrete. But then I looked at it more closely and saw that it was kind of a mess. You see this? Don't they look like pebbles? I didn't add pebbles, I just added sand. And that's when I learned that the type of sand you use really matters. I thought all sand was basically the same, you know, sand. But look at this. I got myself a sieve and ran the sand through it my sand had a bunch of little tiny pebbles in it. So I ran a whole lot of play sand through a sieve to get fine sand. Turns out, this is the way. I should have treated the sand before using it. Once I started using fine sand in my concrete, the surfaces of the pieces I cast were a lot smoother. To make my concrete even smoother, I started running the Portland cement through a flour sifter. By the way, I always wear a mask when mixing concrete. You don't want this stuff in your lungs. There were two other aspects of making concrete that I had to learn about. First was the ratio of the ingredients, cement, sand, and water. And second was removing bubbles from the concrete. If you put too much sand in concrete, it makes the mix grainy. And if you add too much water, the concrete is not strong and crumbles easily. I could bore you by going through all the concrete tests I did in minute detail, but I'd rather you stick around and watch the rest of the video. So here's the final concrete recipe that gave me the best results. Two parts Portland cement to one part fine sand by weight. I tried mixing by volume, but the results were really inconsistent. Mix the dry parts together and then add just enough water until you get the consistency of thick mud and add the water slowly. It really doesn't take too much and the consistency goes from not enough to soup in a second. The second thing I had to control for were bubbles. If you don't remove bubbles from the concrete, they cause what's referred to in the mold making biz as voids. You want to avoid voids. Fortunately, they're easily avoidable. And this is the way. To avoid them. Am I, am I saying the catchphrase too much? The best way to remove bubbles is to agitate the concrete mixture. You can agitate concrete by knocking on the side of the concrete bucket or mold, but a better way is to put the concrete on a vibration table. Here's my first vibration table. It kind of worked, but it was really janky, hard to use, and pretty dangerous. Eventually, I built myself this vibration table. I'll put out a video about it later. By vibrating the concrete mixture on here for 60 seconds, I could remove virtually all bubbles. Look at the difference between the first and last castings that I made. 
Very cool, right? Okay, next up is the pedestal. The pedestal mold went through a bunch of design and process iterations, probably more than the bust and concrete combined. Let me say at the start that my very first mistake with the pedestal was making it too large. I didn't realize my mistake until I was almost at the end of the process. I was going to make a silicone cut mold of the pedestal, but quickly abandoned the idea after watching dozens of mold making videos. I realized that one of these two-part molds would be a better choice for a pedestal, but I also thought that making a two-part mold was probably too ambitious for my first project. Then after watching concrete flower pot videos that used 3D printed molds, I thought, hey, I have a 3D printer, I'll do the same thing. But instead of making a flower pot, I'll make a mold for a pedestal. I'm so freaking smart. My first two attempts didn't work though. <laughs> I tried three and four part molds printed in PLA, but couldn't separate the molds. Unlike the 3D printed flower pot molds I saw, my molds weren't smooth. The pedestal had grooves which locked the concrete in place. It was impossible to remove the cast part from the mold without destroying the pedestal and the mold itself. So not so freaking smart after all. Then I came across a video that used a thin liner printed in a flexible filament called TPU. And that gave me a great idea. What if I made the whole mold out of TPU? Badoosh. So that's what I did. I printed the mold out of TPU with rigid PLA parts to hold everything together. It didn't work the first time. I had to iterate over the mold a lot, mostly because 3D printing TPU is tricky. It kind of looks like a castle, doesn't it? Those are finger holds that make it easier to pull the mold apart. My final design had a lower ring for the bottom part of the pedestal and an upper section for the rest of the pedestal. Both parts could be printed without support material. The combination of TPU and PLA parts made pouring and then removing the concrete part from the mold very easy. I experimented with grapeseed oil and petroleum jelly as mold release agents, preferring the petroleum jelly as it clung to the mold better. It looks pretty good. I also experimented with the bottom and top inserts in an attempt to mold holes in the pedestal, but those attempts failed. My idea was to use the holes for mounting the Mandalorian bust to the pedestal, but in the end it was easier and better to drill holes using masonry bits. My TPU mold worked out great. I was, I was really happy with the results. Of course, it, it wasn't perfect. The lower ring would sometimes get concrete under it, which would mess up the casting. Plus, you see these layer lines in the mold? Well, you can't fill those in when you print your part in flexible filament like you can with PLA. And those layer lines get transferred to the part that you cast. And finally, we focus on Mando's bust. Nope, that sounded weird. And now we arrive at the portion of the video where I talk about the Mandalorian shaped concrete block I made out of concrete. Nailed it. I wanted to make a mold of a Mandalorian bust but I didn't have a bust to mold. But I thought if I could find a model of Mando, I could print it on my 3D printer. Have I mentioned that I have a 3D printer? <laughs> because I do. It's for printing things in 3D. This excellent Mandalorian model caught my attention and it reminded me of a classic Roman or Greek bust. This was my starting point. I used a 3D model editing program called Mesh Mixer to cut off the legs and arms of the Mandalorian model and try to shape it into a bust. It was a slow and painful process because I'm not a sculptor and I had to stop every few minutes to watch videos on how to use Mesh Mixer. By the way, the reason you see so many busts here is that as I sculpted, I made copies of the bust at different stages in case I needed to go back to a previous version. Oh, and you see the slope back? I did that on purpose to make it easier to print on my FDM printer. Eventually, I got as close to a Roman looking bus as I could with my limited skills. After printing the model, I sanded and sprayed it with primer to soften the layer lines. 
I should have spent more time on this part and fully filled in the layer lines. More on that later. Okay, I had my Mando bust model. Next task was building a container around it and filling it up with silica. Using foam core, I made a little platform and container around the 3D printed bust. By the way, the little platform will become the top of the mold. It will be the opening where I'll pour in the concrete. Most block mold videos I watched said to plan where you're going to cut the mold before you pour the silicone. So that's what I did. Once the mold box was complete, I mixed and poured silicone over it. The silicone I used was Mold Star 15. It's a platinum cure silicone with a pot life of 50 minutes, a cure time of 4 hours, a short hardness rating of 15A, and a mix ratio of 1 to 1 by volume. And if none of that makes sense to you, don't worry about it. I didn't know what it meant until I did a lot of research. Basically, it's a good silicone to use because it's easy to mix, stays liquid for a long time, and is flexible but strong. Perfect for a beginner like me. Oh, and I discovered that I didn't have enough silicone. Yay! So I had to get more and finish it a couple of days later. Next, I cut Mando out of the carbonite, the, the, the silicone. This is the part of the project that I was most nervous about. I was worried that I would cut it wrong and ruin the mold. The first thing I did was flip the mold block over. As I mentioned earlier, the flat area will be where I pour in the concrete. Then I got a new sharp hobby blade and this cool spreader tool recommended by Steve Ferreira. It's a cool surgical tool called a Vitliner retractor. The one I got is cheap, probably not great for surgery, but it does a good job keeping the silicone spread apart while I cut it. My cutting technique came from Robert Talone. He says to make the cuts wider, longer, and curvier the further away you are from the piece at the center of the mold. So that's what I did. Here's the completed mold once I removed the 3D printed bust from inside. With the mold completed, I started doing casting after casting, trying out different concrete mixes and finishing techniques. I also discovered various mistakes that I made. First mistake was not filling in the layer lines of my 3D printed bust. Even though I primed the 3D print and sanded it, I didn't do enough. I learned that silicone picks up very fine detail like layer lines and rough edges. I tried removing the layer lines with sandpaper and metal files with some success, but it was clear this is not the way to do this. <laughs> the other big mistake I made was not accounting for areas in my mold that could trap air. Take a look at the arms. Because the mold is upside down, air gets trapped in this area at the tips of the arm stumps causing voids. I tried a few different ways of removing air from those pockets, like forcing the concrete down or tilting the mold as I filled it, but none of them really worked. Then I thought I would fill in the bubbles with leftover concrete. That worked okay, I guess, but that was a lot of extra work and the arms didn't look right. In the end, I cut the mold inside to allow air to escape what they call in the mold making biz an air vent. The castings came out with these little bridges in Mando's armpits, but they were very easy to file away. Apart from sanding and reshaping the pedestals and busts I cast, I also applied what they call in the mold making biz a wash. It's watered down paint that you apply to the surface of your casting. It's meant to make the castings look weathered, but mine didn't really come out that way once the wash dried. I'll try it again in the future. I probably just did it wrong.
To finish the bust, I drilled holes in the pedestals and busts and glued them together with construction adhesive and a bolt. Stop touching things. So what do you think? They're not perfect, but I really like them. This is the way. There you have it. I had tons of fun and learned a lot in making these. I'm already planning on making busts of other characters and expanding my mold making and casting skills. Okay, see ya, bye. This is the way. This is the way that I started it. No, that doesn't work. There you have it. There you have it. I had a lot of fun. I can bring you in warm or I can bring you in cold. There you have it. I had a lot of fun. I, okay, nope. Let me have a warrior's death. There you have it. I had, there you have it. I had tons of fun making. Uh, oh. I am the walrus, goo goo gajoob. There you have it.